It was 1918, I was four years old, and uh, I was out with my mother on a tram car in Liverpool where I was born, and there was crowds outside waving flags and the, it was an armistice. And that night, um, a gramophone came into our house where there was a party going on, and I remember looking into this great big mahogany horn, wondering where all the music came from, and the people were dancing around, and I got off that sideboard and started to move. And that's really how it started. I was 17, and it was useless my staying in Liverpool, so they sent me to London, and I saw an advertisement in the paper, tap dancer needed for Paris. I went, I could tap dance, I did an audition, and lo and behold, I had a job. There were ten boys, and we were known as the Jackson Troops, and my leading lady was Josephine Baker. And we had to do anything, tap dancing on buckets. I was, we were dressed up and as any kind of animals. We did everything. I was there a year and a half. I got back to London and then I did an audition for Anton Dolan. And Mr. Dolan said to me, Freddie, it's about time you became serious about your art. Alicia and I are having a company and you're in it. He had just returned from Paris. All the kicking and everything, not the classical ballet, you see. And uh, that's where Freddie was very versatile. My actual debut into the ballet was doing Harlequin with Markova as Columbine in Fokine's Carnival. And I was petrified. I was a soloist with the Mark of Adolin Ballet. And in the audience, I remember there was Leonid Miasin and his wife. Suddenly, Freddie Franklin came to me and he said, did you know that Mr. Massine has been coming and watching our performances. He seems to be interested. Who would it be? And then, after the performance, a young man came around and he handed me a note from Yasin. And I read the note and it just said, if you would like, please come to this address tomorrow morning, which was Sunday, at nine o'clock. So I went the following morning at nine o'clock and I sat in front of Yassine. He looked at me and he has those big brown eyes and he said, I think it would be marvelous if you came to my new company as a premier dancer, will you sign for four years? And I just signed and looked at him. And then there was the rumor that Markova had signed. To me, the idea of Markova leaving the Markova Dolin Ballet Company was outrageous. So I had to go and make sure that she was. And that was it. And I said, Elise, have you? And she said, you? And we said, yes. So that was it. She had signed and I had signed. And with that, the word was out. Leonid Massine had left the Colonel. Danilova. No, of course, she, she wasn't easy. She wasn't easy at all. And she was an established star, and here am I, a young one, coming up. So my first meeting, she said, young man, I hear the Miasin like you very much. She said, tomorrow, I will see. And suddenly her name went on the board with mine. And I thought, oh my goodness, now I'm going to be dancing with her. Frederick Franklin and Alexandra Danilova were about to launch a 20-year partnership and originate leading roles in what would become the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo's most beloved work, Gaîté Parisienne. You can see 
the coordinate between the two bodies. When she finally relied upon me and had, she trusted me that I could start doing things with a nuance or with an arm or a different kind of lifting position. But at the beginning it was, it was two bodies and it had to fuse. Otherwise it's not going to make anything of it. That's why the partnership lasted the 20 years that it did.